Welcome to The Heart of Health Live. There's a place for modern medicine in your life. Learn to use it correctly by getting your toughest questions answered on today's broadcast. Discover modern medicine's strengths and weaknesses. Lifestyle medicine opens the door to optimum health and healing. How you live and what you eat can profoundly affect mind and body. Learn simple solutions to complex problems. God provides the ultimate healing we all desire. He wants us healthy and happy. We just need to understand His plan for our lives and live accordingly. And now, live from Studio 1A in Chattanooga, Tennessee, here's your Heart of Health host, Dr. James Markham. Welcome. With, I'm glad you've joined us today on Heart of Health Live, where you're the program. And our phone lines are wide open. And every week what happens is that you know, everyone wants to call the last 30 minutes. But I want to give our number out right now. It's 855-644-3278, where you can ask your questions. I'm going to introduce your guest after this first segment, but it's Dr. Tim Jennings. And he has wrote, written a wonderful book. And I've read it from cover to cover. I actually marked up in it. And it's literally changed the way I view of health and healing. And if you're watching this program today and you want to know the cause of disease, if you're interested in answering the reason why, if you want to know what the solution to the health care dilemma is, well, you want to stay tuned to this book and learn about it because this is really is going to revolutionize the way we think and it also helps your spirituality. And you know at Heart of Health, you know, we believe that there's a place for modern medicine. We believe that there's a place for lifestyle changes. But at the top of that healing pyramid, it's about that relationship with God. And many of us out there are seeking, hunting for truth. We want to learn more about God and how He can change us to discover new truth that can improve our lives, that might be able to take away fears. And when our fears go away, our chemistry starts to improve. We fall in a deeper love with our Savior. We have a deeper relationship. Well, this book, The God-Shaped Brain by Dr. Tim Jennings is something we're going to talk about. And you can call and ask questions of him. He's volunteered to give his time this evening to be with us. Our number, 855-644-3278. Dr. Jennings is a board-certified psychiatrist. He sees patients every day. He's president-elect of the Tennessee Association of Psychiatry. He's traveling all over the world, um, not only delivering this message about how God can shape your brain, but he's also helping people do better. He's serving them, improving his own brain. So stay with us and give us a call, 855-644-3278. Dr. Jennings is going to be joining us right after this short break. The Heart of Health Live will return in just a moment. The Heart of Health Live is brought to you by HeartWise Ministries. Hello, I'm Dr. Tim Jennings with your Mental Health Minutes. Are you pregnant or thinking of becoming pregnant? Do you want to ensure your child will have the healthiest brain possible? Then avoid all alcohol because as little as one glass of wine per week alters brain development and is associated with behavior and emotion problems. Avoid smoking. Children born to mothers who smoked had higher rates of learning and behavior problems and psychotic disorders. Take omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3s promote healthy brains and higher IQ. And watch out for depression. Untreated depression is associated with delayed fetal growth and altered brain development. However, antidepressants can increase miscarriage rates, contribute to smaller fetal heads, and slow growth in the newborn. If depressed, consider transcranial magnetic stimulation, the only FDA-cleared drug-free treatment for depression with no risk to the fetus. To be smart requires a healthy brain, so be smart, do right, and make your child bright. To learn more about mental health, visit comeandreason.com. Medicines That Kill from cardiologist Dr. James Markham is now available. In his newest book, Dr. Markham explains why he believes that medications may very well be the number one cause of death in America. Medicines That Kill uncovers the hidden risks associated with modern pharmaceuticals and outlines the biblical plan for physical and spiritual health. To find out how to get your copy, visit our website at heartwiseministries.org or call us toll free at 855-644-3278.
Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. You've got questions. We've got answers on the Heart of Health Live. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us. And if you just tuned in, we're talking about mental health. And we're, I want to encourage you to take some time and look at this book. It's called The God-Shaped Brain by Dr. Tim Jennings and it can be um, Amazon.com, you can get your copy, you can order it, um, you can look at it, you can write a view in it, and I'm gonna write a five-star review as soon as I go through it one more time. It's actually the change the way I personally practice medicine, it's changed my relationship with God. And I like to think, Dr. Jennings, that my part of my brain called the anterior cingulate got a little bit bigger after reading this book. But tell us, what, how, you know, you saw patients today, didn't you? I saw actually probably about 12 patients today, yeah. yeah. Now the way I deal with patients, you know, when you see patients, when you serve them, okay, according to your book, you have positive brain changes when you serve other people. That's, a, that's right, absolutely. So by going to work, we can make that anterior cingulate grow, we can increase the, the prefrontal cortex, and we can turn off some of that stress hormones if we don't overdo it. And if we don't overdo it, and if our motive is to actually help others. Right. That's the key. You can do a behavior, but if you do the behavior out of uh, anger, out of resentment, out of bitterness, out of uh, a selfish drive to get ahead, uh, then those behaviors actually fire this, uh, the, the stress circuits of the right. brain. But if you're doing it because you have compassion, care, love for people, you're giving of yourself because you want to help others, then that actually fires the, the healthy circuits of the brain. You know, and I think this book is so revolutionary because the next revolution in healthcare is not going to be another procedure, it's not going to be a pill, it's going to be understanding the truth. Now, I, I made the statement as we started that the cause of disease can be found in this book. Absolutely. Well, tell me, you know, give me some, what led you to write this book and, and give me some of the pearls that's in it before we start answering questions here. Okay. Well, what led me to write the book, book was a combination of experience with patients who have come to see me over the years. Many people have come to see me distraught, heartbroken, uh, uh, feeling burdened because of some picture of God that they hold. I tell a story in the book of a, of a woman who came to see me with uh, with depression, anxiety. Um, she had a, a marriage but wasn't happy, had children but was in conflict, had a job but felt oppressed, um, never really experienced any joy. If anything good happened, she anticipated it was going to just be taken from her. And as, the, as I took the history, I asked her the question, as I always do at some point in the history, if she believed in God. And at that point, she became very angry and looked at me, don't you ask me about God, I don't, I don't believe in Him. And then she oh, went on to to tell me about how much she you know, distrusted and didn't like and was angry at this God she didn't believe in. And as I dug a little deeper, when she was seven years of age, her mother died in a motor vehicle accident. And she told me very clearly how um, when she was sitting on the front pew of the church during the funeral, the, the preacher looked down at her and said these words, Jesus took your mommy to be with him. And she looked at me with anger. She says, but I needed my mommy with me. And so what happened in this woman's mind is this idea, the well-meaning preacher trying to bring comfort, actually put this idea in this little girl's head that God takes mommies from their children. Oh. And so throughout her life now, when anything would go bad, in her view, it was God taking it from her. And if anything went well, she couldn't really appreciate it because it was just a matter of time before God would take it. So she had this view of God that was oppressive, and this was actually stealing from her at, uh, her, her peace and joy. And what brain science now teaches us is that and when we fire those negative stress circuits, it actually undermines our physical health. It changes our brain structure. Mm -hmm. That, in combination with some other experiences, led me to read the book, uh, to write the book. Yeah, well, it's, I'm just glad it's written. And, and I, don't, I think it's more than a, it, this book can be very evangelistic. You know, this is something that people can share with their friends. Um, it's something that you can learn more. And it really brings you into a healthy relationship. And I think it, for people that don't necessarily think about God, um, one of the things that can improve your health just to start thinking about God. You know, you, you quoted Dr. Newberg's work. Well, it depends yeah. on which God you That's think right. about. That's right. This is what I'm putting in the book. Right. Um, uh, there are many versions of God out there. In fact, according to the Christian Encyclopedia 2001, um, there are um, currently 34,000 different Christian groups all okay. claiming the Bible as their basis of faith. Think that wow. through. 
We have the Bible, but there's 34,000 different groups. Now, how does that come about? Uh, and, right. and anybody uh, that goes to church very often will know, even within the same congregation, there are different gods being worshipped. Mm -hmm. Some worship a loving, benevolent God. Some worship an angry, wrathful God. Some worship a punitive, authoritarian God. Some worship a distant, uncaring God. All in the same church. Uh, it, Baylor University did a survey, 2006, of Americans uh, to see what version of God people believed in. Did you know only 23% of Americans in this survey believed in a benevolent, loving God? 32% believe in an authoritarian God, 24% in, uh, in a critical God, and 16% in a distant or uncaring God. 5% wow. were atheists. So 77% believe in the God that other than a loving God. And what, what this brain science shows and what we demonstrate in, our, in the book is that it really makes a difference which God concept you hold to. It changes you neurologically, structurally of your brain. It alters your physical health. It actually alters how your genes are being expressed, which genes are turned on, which genes are turned off, all based on what you believe. You know, in the scripture, there's a state, by beholding we become changed. Right. Okay? It, uh, uh, worshiping, the, the faith, looking into the face of Christ, by beholding we become changed. That's absolutely true. We are changed based on the God we admire and worship. This is, this is no question about it. So maybe we should answer the question, well, if there's 34,000 different groups out there uh, all claiming the Bible, how do we know which group's right? Right. How can you tell? Does it matter what you believe? Or is any belief, is any belief in anything okay as long as you believe something sincerely? Well, every, any belief in anything isn't okay. Believing sincerely uh, that uh, cigarette smoke helps you ble breathe better will not actually do your lungs good. No. Okay, you can believe it sincerely. I had actually a patient right. once that did, did tell me that. But it doesn't help the lungs. Because you, your belief in a, a, a concept that takes you out of harmony with the way God built life to operate doesn't protect you from the violations of those protocols for life, you see? Mm -hmm. And this is what many people don't understand. There are certain God concepts that are take you out of harmony with the way God built life to operate. So what we've introduced in the book is we've introduced this new methodology, mm -hmm. this new approach to how do you determine which truth is the most reliable truth. We've introduced something called the integrative evidence-based approach, which requires the harmony of three separate threads of evidence. The three threads of evidence, of course, scripture. Mm -hmm. you know, the Bible says all scripture is given by God. Right. Okay. Uh, science. The Bible says in, in uh, Romans 1.20 that God's divine nature is seen in what he has made so that men are without excuse. And third, experience. The Bible tells us, taste and see. Check me out. Experience. Right. Or Jesus said to Thomas, put your fingers in my side. Experience. So we, want, we take three threads of evidence and require harmony on every point. You see, if you take science and separate it from the other threads, you end up in evolutionism and godlessness. Right. If you take experience and separate it from the other threads, you end up in uh, mysticism. But if you take scripture and separate it and use sola scriptura, only scripture without the other threads, you end up with 34,000 different Christian groups. You end up in confusion and conflict in this religious group fighting against that religious group. And we end up pitting ourselves against each other. It's one of Satan's big traps to, to take the three threads God has provided for us and separate us out rather than bringing an integrated approach. And that's what we've done in this book. We teach and we show with every major point how all three threads, science, scripture, and experience all harmonize on the points we make. Well, wow. and I love the science part. In fact, this is something I've introduced into my practice, how, you know, the way you think, the way you worship, um, whether you believe truth or not, whether you search for truth or not, how it changes your chemistry and helps not only prevent disease and treat disease. So we have it, The God-Shaped Brain by Dr. Tim Jennings, um, Amazon.com. And if you are in the Chattanooga area, it's available at Lifeway Christian Books. I'm Dr. Jennings. I understand you have a lot of traveling you're going to be doing all over the world um, coming up. So I'm glad that this message is getting out there to lots of people. And if you just join us, we want you to give us a call. Our phone number is 855-644-3278. And we're learning about the brain. The brain is where illness starts. When sin came into the world and that stress was put on us, that's when all these bad things started happening. And now if we can get our brains thinking more clear, think it more God's way, we're going to have better health and we're going to come to ultimate healing. We're going to continue our discussion with Dr. Tim Jennings after this break. We're going to talk about how lies damage your body. We're going to be right back. The Heart of Health Live will return in just a moment. I'd like to think that one day, when we get to heaven, we're going to see a list of people 
people like Jared and Susan who were introduced to Jesus because of something we said. Or maybe it was as simple as a passing smile. But these people will look into their past and be able to say, I'm here because of you. Recently, you may have heard that HeartWise Ministries has begun spreading the gospel to the young, the old, the sick, and the healthy using this very television program. But we need your help. We want to take this type of medical programming to the non-believer and the person who has closed themselves off to traditional forms of outreach. If you believe as we do and want to support HeartWise so that together we can count more names on the tree of life, please consider donating today at heartwiseministries.org. That's heartwiseministries.org. My life is full of statistics. Thing is, I could have dropped out of school and become one myself, but I didn't because I had people that believed in me. Here's another statistic. 7,000 students drop out every school day. That's one every 26 seconds. It's time that students know that we believe in them. Inspire a student and share your message of support at boostup.org. HeartWise Ministries is proud to present, for the first time ever on DVD, The Heart of Health Live. We've selected 12 of our most popular episodes and bundled them with four never-before-seen programs. For a donation of $30 or more, you will receive four DVDs for a total of 16 hours of The Heart of Health Live. Call us now or send a check to 6148 Lee Highway, Suite 106, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37421. Heartwise Ministries and these adorable sheep <laughs> want to remind you that every Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern, the Heart of Health Live is all new with an exciting guest. That's 6 p.m. right here on this station. got questions we've got answers on the heart of health live welcome back and you can join our discussion tonight by calling us at 855-644-3278 i want to take this chance right now to thank all of our heartwise ministries 100 partners who have joined us to help keep this program on reaching people with medicine. You know, we don't sell any products here. You know, we, there's no herbs or supplements. All the physicians we have, we bring on and healers. They all actually work and see patients every day. We're not in Hollywood, as you can tell. You know, I'm still wearing a white jacket. And we just thank people for volunteer. We don't pay physicians like Tim Jennings. They come on because they want to serve you, give you good, great information. And Dr. Jennings, you know, um, I've been introducing, after I've read the book, the concept of love as, as, as a treating force and help, if you have more love in your life, it's going to help your chemistry and help lower the risk of heart attack. And I also try to talk about selfishness and how that damages us. And you speak a lot about this circle of love in your book. Yeah, let's talk about that. And we're going to, let's take the audience quickly through some examples. We're only going to give a, the high overview, you'll get more details in the book, of the integrative evidence-based approach, how scripture, science, experience all teach this, this love is not just an emotion. It is a design protocol. When the Bible says God is love right. and he's the creator, that as the Creator, He went out and built or constructed His universe to operate in harmony with His own nature of love. Thus, as I show in the book, that the law of love is a protocol upon which life is built to operate. Mm -hmm. Scripture says that the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving or bringing life to the soul. Okay, it, it, it is the protocol upon which life is given. And, uh, and in nature, when we look at that, what we see is that, uh, a simple example, every breath you take, you give away carbon dioxide, mm -hmm. and plants give back oxygen to you. The principle of love is the principle of giving or the principle of beneficence. Greater love is no man that he give his life for a friend. God is giving. And so we see the, the scripture teaches that law of love is the law of giving. And then science will show us that in nature that every living system gives. If it's not freely giving, if you decide to break that law, for instance, of respiration, decide, look, my body made carbon dioxide, I'm gonna selfishly hoard mine, I'm gonna keep it, you can't have it, so you put a plastic bag over your head, mm -hmm. then what happens? Yeah, you suffocate. Well, you're, you're transgressing the law, and this is, and transgression of the law is called sin, and the wages of sin is? 
happen. Death. Oh, wow. You mean this is like really what happens? You break the protocol by which life is built and death happens? This is exactly what happens. We see it in scripture teaches this. We see it in science. What about experience? Volunteerism, people who volunteer their time. Multiple studies show have, um, they're more successful in life, they have less uh, illness, less disability, they maintain their autonomy longer, they have less dementia. Uh, all these things, you have better health if you actually give of yourself rather than live selfishly. So we find in all three spheres, harmony, God is love, his design, his universe is love, the law which, upon which life is built is the law of giving or beneficence. Wow. So, so would this be a fair analogy that the that the oxygen, the water, the food is of the universe is love? That's exactly right. Exactly right. The, 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 the energy upon which the universe is built emanates from God himself. You can get an Im image of this in, in uh, uh, Daniel chapter 7 where God takes his throne and rivers of fire come out from before him and then 10,000 times 10,000 live in this fire and you put that together with a little song of Solomon where it says love, love is like a blazing fire. Yeah, okay? yeah. All right? God is constantly giving of himself to sustain his universe, a never-ending flow, but it flows back to him in praise and love. This is a never-ending yeah. circle that the universe Universe runs upon. And, the, and the something that we maybe can understand is, is that manifestation of love, putting someone else above yourself, might be that brightness, that, that, that sort of that glowing, that burning fire, that sort yeah. of an example of yeah. what, what it would look like to a mere human. Yeah. Now, you've talked about love. Let's talk about, you know, love is sort of this force, and when love's not there, that's when we start seeing disease and problems. Yes. Absolutely. So let's talk about the opposite yes. love that causes all the yes. disease and all these problems. And how did this happen? So if this is God's design. If he built things to run on this principle of giving, what, what happened? Well, I want you to imagine you're in a healthy, loving, other-centered, giving, beneficent relationship. You love your spouse. Your spouse loves you. It's a giving mm -hmm. circle. You're just really happy together. And somebody you also love and trust, maybe a brother, maybe one of your parents, maybe a, an adult child, somebody you love and trust comes to you and tells you a lie. With tears in their eyes, they're crying as they tell you this lie that your spouse is having an affair. Mm -hmm. And then they whip out their computer and they show computer pictures that they've doctored on their computer showing your spouse in the arms of another. Now while there's no truth in it, your spouse is loyal and faithful. If you believe the lie, will something inside you change? Yes. Absolutely. And this is the key. Satan is the father of lies. Lies believed break the circle of love and trust. And so you believe your spouse is having an affair. They're not, but you believe it. What happens inside? You love and trust is broken. And what springs up immediately? Broken love and trust results in fear and selfishness. I'm okay. afraid that they're going to get the money, so I better get to the bank account and protect myself. I'm afraid they might have brought a disease home. I better go to my doctor and get checked out. I'm afraid they don't have my back, so i got to watch out for myself now. Right. And fear and selfishness together... See, that motive of fear makes us watch out for self, makes us more selfish. Together, in the world is known today as survival of the fittest, mm -hmm. watching out for self. In all nature, because of Adam and Eve's belief in the lies, the serpent lied about God. They believed those lies. Love and trust was broken. Fear and selfishness rooted in the heart, and they then acted on those fear and selfish impulses and acted to, to protect self. They took the fruit to advance yeah. themselves. So that's been going on for years. What does it do chemically? Now what happens when you activate your, when you believe lies about God, let's say you believe a fear inducing God. Let's say you believe a God who is wrathful must punish, a God who requires payment in order to be appeased. Let's say this is your view of God. What happens in the brain when you believe that God is you fire brain's amygdala, your fear circuitry. Okay. When you fire the brain's fear circuitry amygdala, it activates it uh, chronically. When you stay, keep firing this because you believe this way, it activates in your body your macrophages, your, your immune system. Mm -hmm. And the macrophages release inflammatory cytokines. These inflammatory factors interfere with insulin signaling causing insulin resistance. This causes the body to kick up more insulin. Wow. The insulin causes the body to store fat. This is happening at the same time because of under stress, your body's releasing a, uh, a steroids called uh, glucocorticoids, right. and the steroids are designed to pump glucose into your bloodstream so you have energy for fight or flight, but this is happening in a face of, of insulin resistance. So what's happening, this means is, is that this chronic stress, belief in a false distorted God construct, increases your risk of diabetes, obesity, ischemic heart attacks, strokes, also contributes to osteopenia, osteoporosis, uh, and it, it actually changes the brain, yeah. where you actually get shrinkage in hippocampus. Hippocampus where new learning and memory takes place. Thinning a dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex. That's where your, your higher godly uh, attributes are, where you reason, where you plan, where you organize, where you self-restrain, where you worship. It thins when you, so your ability to actually worship a no God, if you worship a fear-based God, is impaired over time. Yeah. 
You know, studies at uh, the University of Pennsylvania at Newburgh and his group mm -hmm. show that if you worship a God of love and meditate on this type of God, you actually grow the part of your brain where you experience love. It's called the anterior cingulate cortex, where you experience empa empathy, compassion, other centeredness. They can measure within 30 days growth in this part of the brain, which correlates immediately with lower heart rate, lower blood pressure, and improved memory. On, wow. on standardized testing. And so what we find is that the interior cingulate cortex, the part of the brain that experiences empathy and compassion, when it fires, it turns off your fear circuitry. Perfect love casts out fear. Neurobiology, the science and the scripture harmonize. We have harmonized truth again. Oh, I like that. And then the, and then the studies by Newberg, the experience, all three harmonize here. But only a God of love brought these benefits. If they worshiped and meditated on an angry God, a wrathful God, a punitive, they didn't get these benefits. Only a God of love changes your brain in a positive direction. Well, that's exciting. And you know, and, and you know, when you talk about this, you know, you talk about the you know, stress and the free rattle, radicals and the oxidation that goes on. Oxidation damages our DNA, our epigenetics. Absolutely. And we have these diseases that are passed down from generations because we might have had this for a long time. Um, God Shaped Brain by Dr. Tim Jennings, Amazon.com. If you don't have a computer, you can go to any bookstore in America and ask them to order it for you. It'll change the way you think um, literally about your relationship with God. It'll improve your chemistry. I highly recommend it. Rose, stay with us. Dr. Jennings is going to answer your question. You're watching Heart of Health Live. We encourage you to be one of our Facebook friends or join us on our website, heartwiseministries.org. Dr. Tim Jennings has graciously shared with us today and we're going to be right back with Rose after this break. The Heart of Health Live will return in just a moment. Could it be this simple changed my life? What an amazing and solid yet fulfilling and liberating message Dr. Jennings provides. I loved it. It is liberating. It frees your mind from all your mental turmoil and teaches you what is really going on. This book is amazing and makes so much sense. It shows God as a God of love rather than an arbitrary, exacting God. I am so grateful that a friend suggested I read, Could It Be This Simple? It has helped me fine-tune my thinking. This book not only helps the mind to heal, but helps to liberate the emotions by bringing them into balance. You will be captivated with the case studies liberally sprinkled throughout this small, easy-to-read book. I dare you to read it. Get your copy of Could It Be This Simple, a biblical model for healing the mind at Amazon.com or wherever books are sold. I'm Dr. James Markham, and I talk to patients every day who want to know the truth in healthcare. On our website, heartwiseministries.org, you can have your questions answered. You can read my blog where I talk about interesting and controversial subjects in medicine. You might choose to go to the radio or television sections and learn more about all sorts of health topics. Take the time and go to heartwiseministries.org. Hi, I'm Dr. James Markham, Speaker Director of HeartWise Ministries. And at HeartWise, our goal is to bring people into a relationship with the Heavenly Father using modern medicine and the healing principles found in the Bible. We teach people that there is a place for modern medicine and a healthy lifestyle, but it is in a relationship with their Creator where ultimate healing can occur. Over the past years, our ability to share this message of truth, love, and healing around the world has increased exponentially. But to continue this steady growth, we need your help. We are looking and praying for 100 individuals willing to give $1,000 a year. If the Spirit is moving you to become one of the HeartWise 100, won't you consider donating online today at heartwiseministries.org. You've got questions, we've got answers on the Heart of Health Live. Welcome back. I'm Dr. James Mark. I'm, I'm talking to Dr. Tim, Tim Jennings, and he's written this book, The God-Shaped Brain. It just came out a few weeks ago, and it's already selling like crazy on the internet now. 
Um, and we want to have one of you that go join us on Facebook tonight can have one of these books. Dr. Jennings is graciously going to give it. and He's going to do an autographed copy. So if you go on our Facebook and give us a like or join us, we'd be happy to, to mail one of these to you. Um, Nick Evanson, our director of communications, will get it you out this week. And drawing. drawing. That's yes. right. We're going to draw. Not everybody. Not everybody. <laughs> drawing. And um, Rose, you're on right now with Dr. Tim Jennings. Rose, go ahead. Rose? Yeah. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Rose. Go ahead. Oh, very good. Um, I have a friend um, that has diabetes, type 2. Um, a year ago, lost her husband, um, has been on Valium. Her psychiatrist has been prescribing it for her since, for years. And plus, she's on two other psychiatric medications. And also, her primary care doctor gave her, I forget the name of it, it's a medication, but she takes by shots that is supposed to curb her appetite. And between all these new psychiatric medications and that thing, um, she is having all of these, she's seeing things, hearing things that are not there, seeing people, and, 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 <coughs> You know, she says she's talked to her, you know, to her husband who's dead and things like that. Um, did, did you have a question, Rose? I tried to talk to her. Yeah, I've tried to talk to her about this, that, you know, let's go to God about it in the Bible and stuff like that. But um, what would you recommend? Because her doctors are just pumping these psychiatric drugs that I think are doing more damage to her than good. Yeah, I, I, I don't know the other meds she's on, and that's very critical. It's possible some of the medicines, uh, but depending on which ones, could actually be worsening her rather than helping her. Helping her. The one you did mention, the Valium, um, is a medicine that I think is very poorly designed for people in a grieving process because when we're grieving and lost and, and lose someone, um, there's a normal state of anxiety and, and emotional distress that we need mm -hmm. to process through and go through. Sure. But what happens is when uh, that 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 emotional distress comes to a certain level and people take a Valium, it just pushes it back. It just pushes it wow. back and they actually can avoid resolving and dealing with their um, with their grief when they're on medicines like Valium. They, they can be okay for a day or two in, in an acute crisis, but chronically they're actually very bad. Also, Valium and medicines like that interfere with normal sleep architecture and so you actually don't uh, get restful and restorative sleep. You're, you're, you interfere with prefrontal cortex function. You actually have uh, degradation of memory consolidation so you become more forgetful. And recent studies are actually implicating the medicines like Valium and increasing risk of dementia if used them chronically. So um, I, I don't, I really don't recommend those for chronic use for people. I would recommend that she get another evaluation. She needs to get in with a good, uh, I, I believe, Christian psychotherapist who can actually help her process through these things. The hallucinations may or may not be due to a side effect of medication. It's not uncommon in an acute grieving state for the person who's grieving to sometimes see or have an hallucination of the one they've, they've lost. Um, it's part of the, the intensity of the emotion and the loss that they can sometimes present that way. That doesn't mean they're psychotic necessarily. It can just be part of a normal grief process it's intense and so we wouldn't necessarily want to medicate that depending on the other associated symptoms so she really needs to get a good evaluation by, by I think a second opinion and then, then in with a Christian psych, psychologist do you have any that you can recommend uh, no no we, we don't Rose we but, don't you can't do that but 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 another thing Rose is okay. just just try to love her as much as you can too you know, give her lots right. of give her lots of love and, and prayer too, and, and we'll be praying for you too. And um, hopefully, this will help at least a little bit. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Um, Dot, you're on with Dr. Tim Jennings. Go ahead, Dot. Dot, you there? Hi. Go ahead. Yes, we, we hear you, Dot. Go I ahead with your question. Up. I wonder if the effect of that medicine and people have on your mind when you actually become delirious and you and you are so sick that you don't really know what you're doing uh, some of the time and that's and i'm elderly and uh that's what happened to me once in my life that was when i was young with so the high fever i had delirious i was delirious a little bit but it um uh, i've had a hard time recovering from the pneumonia it took me a year, and I'm still not strong on my, my legs. And I wondered, you know, what effect the medicine was on might have had 
it will at least be to have that much of a problem for you for a person. Okay. Rose, we had a little bit of trauma hearing you, but I guess a lot of your question has to do with delirium. Yeah, I, I, I'm really yeah. not going to be able to answer that question. Delirium yeah. is, other than to say delirium is a physiological dysfunction and brain function caused by an organic source. Yeah. It could be from an illness, it could be from a drug, it could be from a hypoxia, loss of oxygen, um, but it's always a physical cause to delirium. And if that was something that you went through, then it would need to be addressed by your, your doctors to help resolve those physical causes. D Dot, how are you feeling right now? Well, right now, today I have a, a hard day, but I'm elderly and I'm on a hard medicine also. And not out of hand uh -huh. at times, but only small amount. Okay. I've never been really taking a huge amount, except right after my husband died for a while. But, I was, but ordinarily, I don't take enough of that. It was too much to me. Okay. And you see your doctor on a regular basis? Yes, I see. About four different ones, actually, oh, from okay. different things like, you know, the cardiologist, the primary doctor, the urologist, and not the urologist, the GI doc, and also uh, the person who would operate on uh, problems in your neck from the carotid artery. Okay. That type of a doctor, a surgeon, I guess you yeah. say. Well, good. Well, we want to encourage you to keep, keep, keep seeing them. And like I said, we, it's hard for us to answer questions without all the information, but we want to let you know we're going to be praying for you. And thank you for calling this evening. I'm not good at taking medicines. I mean, the uh, antibiotics usually make me sick. Yeah. Um, prednisone I've never even tried to take before, but okay. um, it's hard to figure out. Prednisone, uh, dot, prednisone is something you dot, prednisone is something you need to talk with your doctors about. Getting off as soon as you can. It's very, it's very well known to cause mental confusion, psychosis, increased risk of delirium. So I would uh, target that medicine and work with your doctor to get off that as, as soon as you can. Okay. Well, I got off of it. I got off of that after about um, probably two weeks. Okay. Okay, dot. We're going to have to go on now. Okay. okay. Dot, we're gonna we're gonna have to move we're gonna have to move to break. But thanks for your call. Appreciate it. Okay. Well, you know, Dr. Jennings, lots of people have problems out there, and you know, and sometimes just realizing you have a problem is a place to start. And I think that you know this circle of love and selfishness is very very good. Um, now you're going to be traveling a lot. Tell us some of the places you're going to be going in case someone out there is watching. Oh, I, I can't even remember okay. all the different places. Okay. I'm going to be in Dallas in September. I'm going to be in Singapore and Australia in, in, um, in August. I'm going to be in July. I'm going to be in Germany, okay. uh, in Aachen, in Berlin. And I'm going to be in, uh, in Los Angeles at, um, at a church in Los Angeles in June. Okay. And, uh, so, uh, and I'm actually going to be at the APA, American Psychiatric Association, next week. Uh, so. Good. Well, we, we want to thank you for writing this book for having the courage to stand up and speak truth as God's revealed it to you. Not everyone can do this. Some people will be too concerned about the criticisms or what other people might say, but whenever you step out, I just want to say God's going to bless you and protect you. Um, to Dr. Jennings, read The God-Shaped Brain. It's available at Amazon and bookstores can order it for you all across America. Um, you can give us a call. Our phone number is 855-644-3278. We're going to continue our discussion about the God-shaped brain and answer your questions. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to answer questions. We don't have all the information, but we will let everyone know that we're praying for you and wishing that God will help in your healing process. So stay with us. Dr. Jennings is going to be right back after this short break. The Heart of Health Live will return in just a moment. I'd like to think that one day, when we get to heaven, we're going to see a list of people. People like Jared and Susan, who were introduced to Jesus because of something we said. Or maybe it was as simple as a passing smile. But these people will look into their past and be able to say, I'm here because of you. Recently, you may have heard that HeartWise Ministries has begun spreading the gospel to the young, the old, the sick and the healthy using this very television program, but we need your help. We want to take this type of medical programming to the non-believer and the person who has closed themselves off to traditional forms of outreach. If you believe as we do and want to support HeartWise 
so that together we can count more names on the tree of life. Please consider donating today at heartwiseministries.org. That's heartwiseministries.org. Have you ever heard things about God that didn't make sense? Have you ever thought that science and scripture cannot be reconciled? Have you heard ideas about God that scare you? Or are you just tired and confused? If you want answers to complex problems, if you want a testable, evidence-based understanding of God and the world around you, an understanding in which the Bible and science harmonize to reveal the reality that God is love all the time, then Come and Reason Ministries is for you. Hi, I'm Dr. Tim Jennings, board certified psychiatrist, and Come and Reason Ministries is dedicated to helping you learn to discern, to stimulate you to think, to help hone and refine your ability to know the right from the wrong, the healthy from the unhealthy, and teach you how to experience healing of your mind, body, and relationships here and now. If you would like an evidence-based approach to knowing God, then visit us online at comeandreason.com. HeartWise Ministries is proud to present, for the first time ever on DVD, The Heart of Health Live. We've selected 12 of our most popular episodes and bundled them with four never-before-seen programs. For a donation of $30 or more, you will receive four DVDs for a total of 16 hours of The Heart of Health Live. Call us now or send a check to 6148 Lee Highway, Suite 106, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37421. You've got questions, we've got answers on The Heart of Health Live. Welcome back. Well, thank you. We want to encourage you to call specifically if you have a call about our, the book, God Shaped Brain and how your spiritual belief also affects your phys physical health. And also one of the things we want to talk about um, is how a lot of people um, believe lies and different things that aren't true and they don't even know it. And that's part of the reason I think you wrote this book to Absolutely. let people, you know, in John, that truth that sets people free. Um, we're not truly free unless we have truth and we should be people that hunt truth. Yeah, and I, I love this. Um, it actually says in Thessalonians, those that are lost are lost because they did not love the truth and thus be yes, saved. Did yes. not love it, no love for the truth. And, and I tell people, you think about God, he's infinite, we're finite. Mm -hmm. How big is the gap between infinity and, and us? Oh, yeah. Okay? So how much room is there for us to grow in our knowledge of God? Tremendously. Infinite. Infinite. Okay? But think about what we've done with religion. In religion, we develop something called tradition. Okay? And we, and we, and we hold to tradition rather than growing in truth. And, and, and to any of our watchers out there, if you think I'm making something up, how many of you would like to come see a doctor, go see a doctor who practices traditional medicine like they did 400 years ago? And when you go to their office, they have a bottle of leeches, and yeah. they have their bleeding instruments, and they have their blistering instruments. Will they blister you? And that's what happens when you get that because they're going to stick with traditional medicine. Or would you like them to, to advance and have their medicine move forward in truth and evidence? Okay. Right. Well, there's more truth. How much truth has, have, we, have we moved forward in, in, in science in the last 400 years? How much truth in medicine have we advanced in 400 years? How much truth in our theology in 400 years have we moved forward with? Right. Seriously. You're right. I know. I mean, this We're is what paralyzed. The, yes, exactly. We're paralyzed. And this is the point, and it's damaging and devastating to the brain to hold distorted God concepts. And, and, and the methodology we've introduced, how do you find truth? How do you know which version? How, why, how can people be deceived? What sets them up for this deception? Several things. One, separating the three threads. God has given us three threads. And if you go with science alone, you end right. up deceived with mm -hmm. evolution, there's no God. You go with experience alone. You can have marvelous experiences, and this is a lot of Eastern mysticism. It's all experience, right. okay? You have marvelous experience, but, but you end up deceived. And you go with scripture alone without the other two, 34,000 different groups, all these things pitted, fighting, on, on how many years, denomination against denomination, pit fighting and all this kind of stuff. The deception going on, okay? Mm -hmm. Deception. How, Jesus himself said, they're going to come to me in the end of time and say, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name. Get ye hence, ye workers of iniquity. They're not doing this name of Buddha or Hare Krishna. He says they're going to be Christians, but deceived. Right. That's okay? such a great point. So, so we want to call people back to an integrated evidence and truth on God's true character as revealed in all three threads, how he runs his universe, operational protocols upon which life is built to operate. 
and then intelligently choose, when we choose to put ourselves in harmony with those protocols, healing and restoration happens to the being. The brain gets stronger, you get more peace, you get more health, you get more happiness. Do you know why you get more happiness? Because happiness, a lot of people are searching for happiness. I see this in my right. office all the time. Happiness, happiness. Happiness is an automatic byproduct of healthiness. When you're healthy in all spheres, think about it. When you're right. unhealthy physically, Right. And, and you're hurting and you're sick, you're not happy. Mm -hmm. When you're unhealthy relationally and you're, you're in conflict with your spouse or your kids, you're not happy. When right. you're unhappy spiritually, you've got unresolved guilt and shame, you're not happy. When you're unhappy psychologically and you hold the distorted self, the distorted, I'm no good, everybody hates me, I did, you're not happy. When you're healthy as God designed life, happiness is, is the byproduct. Right, that's great. Well, hey, we got a lot of callers here. Sandra, you're on with Dr. Tim Jennings. Go ahead, Sandra. Hello. Go ahead. Uh, my son died a year and a half ago, and I had a heart attack in July. It's, it's known as the heartbreak syndrome, or, uh -huh. or it may be Tanasaki uh -huh. syndrome. I don't know if you're familiar with it. And um, I was just wondering how to prevent a second episode uh, because I'm still grieving. Okay. First off, I want to tell you I'm sorry to hear about your, your son's death. And I would encourage if you haven't got into a grief group, get in with a grief group and, and, and or a, a good therapist. But, but uh, how, how you can pre prevent a second episode would be to do everything that is in your power that's in harmony with the way God designed life to operate. And that's going to be on multiple spheres. On the one hand, we want you to resolve the grief and come to peace with a, a hope uh, that is in the Lord that you're going to be reconciled and see your son one day again when the Lord comes. That this is not a, par a parting for eternity, but it's a parting for a period of time. And you can have some hope and, and encouragement that that's mm -hmm. going to, that, that son is going to be restored to you in, in the future. Uh, but coming to a, a, a grief resolution is going to be important. Secondly, to live in harmony with God's physical laws, to, to look at your lifestyle, your diet, your exercise, the foods that you eat, and those types of things to, to reduce inflammation. A low inflammatory diet is gonna reduce your risks of, of, um, of uh, a further heart attack. Then look at your uh, relationships. Are you in relationship conflict? Bringing resolution and finding peace in relationships lowers inflammation. Chronic relationship conflict raises inflammation. Uh, volunteer, giving of yourself, activates anterior cingulate cortex, calms fear circuitry, reduces inflammation. Um, and what God do you worship? Are, are, you, are you growing in a, in a love relationship with God that he's bringing more peace? Or are there elements in your belief system that actually are frightening to you and scary and you don't like to think about? And if that's the case, then those need to be resolved as well. But Jim, you're a cardiologist. You probably have something to add on this. Yeah, um, all of those things are key. And I think of it like stress. Sandra, you want to lower the things that stress. If that stress is extra weight, if that stress is diabetes or hypertension or mental stress or food stress, you want to lower all these stress factors and, and your doctor can work with you on all of those things. And, and you know, one of the biggest stressors that we have in life is the loss of a loved one. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. absolutely. And that's why, you know, getting over that is really going to take, you know, having, having a lot of love in your life. Sometimes I tell people to get a dog. Um, replace that love. C continue on your strong relationship with, 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 with the Lord. That will help give you strength. And, and we want to thank you, Sandra, um, for your call. We're going to be praying for you. So thank you a lot. We're going we're gonna to keep you in our prayers. Um, Elaine's up, Dr. Jennings. Elaine, you're on with Dr. Tim Jennings. Elaine? Yes, hi. Hello. Doctor? Yes. yes. Hi. I'd like to ask you a question. Go ahead. I presently take the... What? Go, Go ahead. ahead. I presently take lorazepam for anxiety, and I'm wondering if that, and I'm 76 years old, okay, and I'm wondering is there a better, I take a half a milligram, okay, a day, or even half of that. I try to keep it very little. Can you give me a suggestion as to what might be a better something better to use? Uh, I, I really can't be recommending a, a treatment protocol for you without knowing you and all the other elements related mm. to your life, which we can't really get into on the show. But I can tell you that, um, that medicines like Ativan, they're called benzodiazepines, actually, um, uh, especially the older we get, can interfere with memory, 
cognition, sleep architecture, and it depends, and, and it, the effects will be magnified depending on when you're taking them. If you're taking them in the early part of the day, it'll have less of an effect on you than if you're taking it in the evening or at bedtime. Uh, it'll have more significant impact because it'll be closer to your sleep hours and altering your sleep architecture. So um, in my practice, I tend to take people um, off of those medicines as best I can uh, because of the uh, associations with um, memory, cognition, and so forth. So I'd recommend you talking with your doctor to see if there's a better alternative for you. I see. Okay. Um, okay, and even though I take very little of it. Yeah, that, that's, you know, the lower the dose is the better, so that's, that's okay. And in your particular case, it, it may be the best medicine for you. I can't say it's not because I don't know you. I'm just telling you in general what these meds do. So you may be on the best medicine for you, and any alternative might be worse given your circumstances. That's why you need to work with your doctor on it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you for your call, Elaine. There was no, no other suggestion, though. No. No, no. no I'm not going to recommend a specific drug without knowing your history. Yeah. Thank you, Elaine. You know, Dr. Jennings, every medicine comes with risk. Right. Every medicine comes with, hopefully, potential benefits, and it's got to be measured with knowing the complete context. Right. Um, we talked a lot about love as a treatment for disease. After we get off break, we're going to talk a little bit about where do we find this love? Where do we find the truth? We're going to be back with Dr. Tim Jennings. The Heart of Health Live will return in just a moment. I'm Dr. James Markham, and I talk to patients every day who want to know the truth in healthcare. On our website, heartwiseministries.org, you can have your questions answered. You can read my blog where I talk about interesting and controversial subjects in medicine. You might choose to go to the radio or television sections and learn more about all sorts of health topics. Take the time and go to heartwiseministries.org. Medicines That Kill from cardiologist Dr. James Markham is now available. In his newest book, Dr. Markham explains why he believes that medications may very well be the number one cause of death in America. Medicines That Kill uncovers the hidden risks associated with modern pharmaceuticals and outlines the biblical plan for physical and spiritual health. To find out how to get your copy, visit our website at heartwiseministries.org or call us toll free at 855-644-3278. Dr. James Markham, Speaker and Director of HeartWise Ministries. And at HeartWise, our goal is to bring people into a relationship with the Heavenly Father using modern medicine and the healing principles found in the Bible. We teach people that there is a place for modern medicine and a healthy lifestyle, but it is in a relationship with their Creator where ultimate healing can occur. Over the past years, our ability to share this message of truth, love, and healing around the world has increased exponentially. But to continue this steady growth, we need your help. We are looking and praying for 100 individuals willing to give $1,000 a year. If the Spirit is moving you to become one of the HeartWise 100, won't you consider donating online today at heartwiseministries.org. got questions we've got answers on the heart of health live welcome back we've been talking a little bit about mental health and how your spiritual life affects your chemistry and your body how it affects your epigenetics how it affects everything so really um, how the mind work is really at the core of disease and unfortunately when we break this law of love that we've talked about guess what happens it sets up all this bad chemistry and that's why we have disease and symptoms and the real solution to that is to have more love to get back to what you know to keep this circle going and Dr. Jennings I know we talk a lot about love and a lot about truth but what are some practical 
steps can people can do that can find love? That can what are some things that they can do to find truth? Yeah, that's a great question. We we talked earlier about what 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 happened that broke God's design. Lies believed break the circle of love and trust. Then where does the solution start? Well, what is it that destroys lies? Yeah. Truth, truth believed. Okay. okay. So if you remember that example I gave about a married couple and you believe right. lies that your spouse is uh, having an affair, but they're not, and so you're alienated because you don't trust them anymore. But your spouse loves you and wants reconciliation. They know you're a victim of a liar. What's necessary to reconcile you back now? What do you need? You need truth. You need the truth that your right. wife not, who, or, right. who has never has, has never done anything uh, to, to cheat on you. Have never done anything wrong. That's what you need. The truth. This is God's position. Okay. Even though your wife has done nothing wrong, because you believe lies about her, she's on trial and she gives evidence of her trustworthiness that dispels the lies and wins you back to trust. Well, it, this is what Paul says in Romans uh, 3 verse 4. He said, God, may you win your case when you take it into court. Right. Okay, God has been lied about. We believe lies and you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free from those lies. The problem is, with there's 34,000 different Christian groups out there, there's a lot of lies about God being told in the church. Mm -hmm. And this is what a lot of people don't know. They're raised in the church. They're raised on certain ideas. Traditions come up. This is what they believe their whole life. They don't even know it's a lie because nobody's ever challenged right. it, you see? So they can't have love without truth. Right. And this is what's beautiful. This book will help them see that because it will show them, hey, I can tell you this much. A the truth about God does not destroy your health. Right. And it, a God concepts that destroy your health are not true. You feel confident saying that? Yes, I do. Okay, and, and, and there are certain God concepts, angry God, wrathful God, punishing God, authoritarian God. These God concepts are destructive to the brain, are destructive to the physical health, and, and they're inconsistent with the scripture as a whole, and we, and we point that out in the book. So lies believed, break the circle of love and trust. Truth believed destroys lies, restores trust. Okay. Once trust is restored, see, the next step was broken love and trust results in fear and selfishness. Trust restored, we open the heart to God. We trust them again. Then it says in Romans 5, he pours his love into our hearts. Okay, so so he gives it to us once. Yes, he pours his love into our hearts. We trust him again. We experience his love, perfect love. Cast, it activates our interior singing of the cortex. Our interior singing of the cortex, now that we know God is love, we worship him. It actually grows stronger. That actual neurobiologic change calms the amygdala, the amygdala, the fear circuitry calms. And instead of seeking to protect self because we're acting in fear, we're actually now acting in love. We're seeking to give of others. So we're not seeking to get, we're seeking to give. So we, we now act in righteousness. Okay. Okay? Yeah. And we develop righteous character. And, 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 and this reduces the inflammatory cascade. We get better physical health. We get better mental health. We get better relational health. We get better spiritual health. The whole thing healing when we come back to a God of love. Wow. So I guess, you know, when we talked earlier about the cause of disease, the solution to the health care dilemma, I guess we could sum it up. To love God is to know God. Uh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And, and that takes away the trust and it starts restoring things. It starts the healing process. Maybe not everything can be healed now, but in time, everything can be perfect in this love. If, if it's a God of love. That's there are good. actually people that love an angry God. Okay. okay. There are people that love that God. Well, we want to remind you about the book, The God-Shaped Brain. It can be purchased on Amazon or you can go order at your bookstores. Go to our website, heartwiseministries.org for more information. And we want to thank Dr. Jennings for sharing us. Let them know we're going to be praying for you as you travel all over the world, thank taking you. truth that's going to heal people's chemistry and bring them to the kingdom. Thanks for joining us tonight on Heart of Health Live.